Welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. I found an illegal shop on Reverb, thanks to the help of a viewer of the show. So this one, Brandon's Custom Shop in Oregon, Wisconsin. He claims that at this shop, they design and work to create high quality guitars at affordable prices and take pride in a wide variety of colors and can custom order any design by request. Feel free to message them with questions. Okay, now I'm not one for, you know, tearing apart businesses and stuff, but I'm pretty sure this is illegal. <laughs> Okay, let's take a look at this guy's shop, because it is impressive all the different colors they've got going on here. But, unbranded single cut 2021 cherry sunburst custom, deep blue, blueberry burst, where have I heard that before? Appetite for destruction slash? On an unbranded single cut? Seafoam green, pastel blue green, honey burst, olive gold, mystic blue, purple burst, Cherry Sunburst, Bahama Yellow, haven't heard that one before, Sea Foam, Tiger Blue, Silver Burst, Ocean Blue, Ebony, Metallic Green, yeah, the list just goes on and on here, even as far as Anaconda Burst and Vermilion Burst. Okay, let's take a look at one of these, we'll just randomly select this guy right here. Okay, this looks just like a Gibson Les Paul, it is a fantastic replica copy here. I mean, the body shape, it's a little bit off. Obviously, you don't have the right font right here. If you look, you get the metric studs. And this isn't lined up quite perfectly the way that Gibson does it. It's the usual telltale signs of a Gibson knockoff, typically a Chinese-made replica. Something else... Okay. <laughs> Do you guys see what's wrong with that pick card right here? Normally, there's a screw that goes into the bracket that keeps that upright. This has the bracket, but it doesn't have the screw. I... <laughs> Did they glue it on there, or is it all one piece? That's the funny thing sometimes about these replicas, is they have never actually seen the real thing a lot of times, so they just look at the photos, and since they didn't get that part right, they probably just manufactured this all as one piece. It would not surprise me. Another good thing to look for is uh, lack of fret nibs, and this one does not have that, but if you custom order your own Chinese replica, I think it's like 30 bucks more, they will do the fret nibs. So if you're buying a used Gibson and you can't tell the difference between this and this, then you might need to hire an expert to help you or ask on a forum. So is there necessarily anything wrong with selling your own brand of single cut guitars? Well, the way that the courts are finding it, not necessarily. I mean, generally people make some changes, but what made me want to feature this shop and kind of put them on blast comes to this. They've literally completely copied the open book headstock design. That is the exact Gibson headstock, and I can guarantee if there was actually a company in the USA selling this exact thing, they would get a cease and desist so fast from Gibson. Because even though in some of these lawsuits, as we've seen in my review and demo, like on the Flying V, they're kind of losing some of the body shapes not being distinctive. The one thing that most courts are upholding is the headstock shape, and this is completely wrong. So what what is the story here with Brandon's Custom Shop? What I believe is happening here is he is placing bulk orders on like AliExpress or wherever you want to buy these things from of like all these different colors and he's listing them on Reverb. And I tried reporting a few of these to see if Reverb would actually take it down. A few of them they did, the other ones they did not. But technically he's not breaking any Reverb rules at this point because he's not saying it's a Gibson Les Paul Custom. He's listed it correctly as unbranded single cut. Because as soon as he would put the word Les Paul in here, yeah, Reverb would kick him out. But since it's unbranded single cut, he's kind of got a loophole where he's at least sold 60 of these things to people that maybe they know where it comes from, maybe they don't. What is unique about this particular business model is since he buys them in bulk, he gets the cheaper pricing. 
This is about how much they cost, actually even a little bit less from most of those replica sellers. So if he's importing a whole batch of these, you know, through C mail and whatnot, he's definitely getting a discount. So, I mean, it's not a bad business if it wasn't for the whole, you know, trademark legal issues. Uh, sadly, I think this guy's shop is going to be shut down. But hey, maybe he can uh, apply to be like an Epiphone dealer or a Squire dealer. I mean, then he'll be selling what all the other shops are selling. And this kind of made him unique. I mean, there are some beautiful guitars in here, but it's not fair to Gibson. I mean, I mean, they own the trademarks, so he should not be allowed to sell these. But the ones I'm really surprised are still up and made it past Reverb's guidelines are the ones that literally have Slash in them. I'm sure he does not approve of these Chinese-made replicas. Well, outside of his new Epiphone collection that's coming out soon. So if you're wondering how he's saying that he can order you any design in any color by request, it's simply because, you know, he's just buying them off of AliExpress. And a lot of these sellers, if you message them, they will do whatever you want. I do not condone it, but, you know, the option is there. Just from a quick look here, you can get like a Black Les Paul Custom for 215 bucks shipped to you for free from China. And then once you find one, you just find a whole bunch of stuff. Now, most of these guitars, they're worse than an Epiphone? I mean, it just depends. Sometimes you just have to upgrade the electronics. I mean, heck, you can even, you know, get an EVH Strat build for 278 bucks. But you gotta be careful buying this stuff because the way they get around selling these is they have a very vague title and they never show you the headstock. A lot of these will come in with the Gibson headstock on them, but they'll get seized by customs and then you're just out the money in general. So whenever you see a big story about custom seizing guitars because of fakes, it's because people buy them on sites like that. So my best advice to this guy is if you want to do this, I think the only way you're going to be able to is if you ask them to modify the headstock, not have the open book headstock shape. But there you can see how this guy makes money. Probably buys them in bulk, gets them for like 180 bucks a piece, and then he flips them for 350, which, you know, honestly, for the fast shipping, if you wanted this product, it's really not that bad. But anyways, by the time you see this video, it'll probably all be taken down by then. But I thought it was interesting that somebody tried to make a living selling chipsons. But anyways, we, we got some time left tonight. That's kind of a dark topic to talk about. Let's, let's see what we've got going on here. Look at this Les Paul Custom here. You know, looking at this with that black background, I really want a white Fenelic fretboard on a white Les Paul Custom. They've done it before. I'm not sure if the Made to Measure program would do it again. I would guess not. I'd probably have to order like a whole run of them to make it possible. But then you'd have to question, do you want to do the white fenelic with the white mother of pearl inlay? Or do you want to swap it up to black to kind of match that? I'm not sure, but that's something <laughs> I really want. If you want to know what I'm talking about, it's these guys. The Brendan Small Epiphone Snow Falcon, I've done a review and demo on that. And you also had this one, the true Gibson version. They basically just feel like a lacquered over maple fretboard. So that'd be kind of cool. What else do we got going on? Next up here, kind of a cool Firebird, to be honest. I was looking at this one earlier. So instead of having mini humbuckers, somebody has upgraded it to actual humbuckers. But what I really like about this particular piece is the pick guard that they've put on it. Now, there's something really cool about the original pick guards, but this one, you know, it looks like it might be made of brass or some similar material. It might not be, you know, perfectly constructed, but I like the artwork on that now that I've zoomed in on that as well. They've got it set up as a wrap tail piece to make it a little bit slinkier feeling. There's some debate on whether that actually happens. Personally, I believe it, but it also depends on the guitar. The rest of this, yeah, it's got some nicks and dings. Moved a strap button. Frets don't seem to be in too bad a shape. Is there a headstock repair? Nope. Oh, and it's actually one of the limited edition 1976 ones. Those are definitely valuable. Not as valuable as the 76 Limited Edition Explorers, but still nice guitars. But they're wanting $4,000 for that one. I like it, but maybe not quite that much. Because I can pick up a nearly all original one in uh, about the same shape condition-wise for the exact same price. So it doesn't make sense from a financial standpoint. 
but it was definitely cool to see. It looks like he's also selling one of the Lizzie Hale Dark Explorers. You can check out this review and demo if you want to learn more about that. Oh my, that's not a bad deal on that Blues Hawk. 850 bucks plus $60 shipping. Man, if this was blue, I would be all over it because I bought one of these, but decided I want to wait until I find the blue one to do the review and demo. This actually appears to be in better shape than my last one. Oh, never mind. Don't you just hate it? You're looking at the guitar, you're falling in love with it, thinking, okay, yeah, I'm ready to buy. Oh, <laughs> that's why it's cheap. That stock crack been repaired. Not the prettiest repair in the world, but it'll do. This 335 is pretty cool. It's listed as a mint 2017 ES335 block reissue. I like that trans purple burst. It's dark. I like the purple bursts when they're more of a uh, actual burst job. This one has a little bit of a perimeter going on, but not a lot. I like that dark color. That looks good on that. I think we've seen a few of these in the Gibson demo shop, haven't we? Oh, I love that side profile view. Do you guys see that? That's like an even richer, darker purple right there, but it's like bursted. So you got dark areas and light areas. That's looking pretty good. Yeah, I would say I would own this thing. I think this would look great once it starts to age a little bit because once the clear coat starts to yellow, I would imagine it would just make the uh, purple finish appear a little bit darker. And that's got some good wood grainage underneath it too. 335s typically do though, but that is available at 3500 And oh, there it is. <laughs> we were just talking about this one. The Red Eye Burst 339 that was in the demo shop. We've got some real photos of it. Yeah, that actually looks pretty good. It's kind of similar. It's like they added purple for the burst of just the like a trans black finish. I wonder if they just put that over top of an already trans black one. Yeah, that still looks pretty cool in person. I really think they should make this a production run instrument especially that fretboard on it. Nice. That works really well because it's got the red streaking. Yep, that was a good buy. I regret not buying this thing when I had the chance. That looks really good in person. Yeah, look at that. Awful. Like you can tell it's cool, but you couldn't tell it was that cool. So I believe the demo shop sold it for 1700. So he's asking a thousand dollar premium on it. And to be honest, he'll probably get it relatively quickly. However, I think I need to correct him there. He says it's a one-of-a-kind paint finish directly from Gibson, not a refinish. As far as I understand, they are refinishes. They're just refinishes from Gibson. So it doesn't necessarily affect the value. Like if you send a guitar in for Gibson to refinish it, it does affect the value, but not quite as much as somebody else doing the job. But since it never left the factory in general, with its original finish. It's kind of a gray area. So far, it seems the public opinion is they like this stuff, they're not devaluing it. In fact, most of these things become instantly more valuable than what they were sold for new, simply because you have to pay the premium because not everybody can sit and refresh the page at 11 a.m. and just keep refreshing and refreshing, <laughs> waiting for the things to come up. I think we've got time for one more guitar tonight. This is an L5S Blonde. Now for collectors, they generally prefer the rare two-piece tops on these, but you know, the three-piece tops, they're a sign of the times. They're not my favorite. I mean, even when they're heavily figured, they're, they're, they're homely looking, I guess you could say. Uh, it really needs some sort of a pick card, I think, to break up the monotony of the three-piece top, but I like the way that that headstock's aged. That's a pretty cool photo. But these are just basically solid body L5 guitars. One day, I would love to try one. They have a lot of unique specs to them, especially the backplate actually being made out of maple as well. Gibson really didn't do that on too many guitars at that point in time. Like that's the only one I can think of off the top of my head outside of like, you know, custom order art guitars. But one day we'll get one of these on the show, but I'm really holding out for a beautiful two piece top example. Oh man, and it's cracked on the top? I, I'm sorry, I don't think it's worth anywhere near that now. Granted, the natural finished ones typically sell for a little bit more and I'm not seeing much on the market, but you know, as a collector, you know, now that it has that crack on the front, granted, it is a really nice top like this one. Oh, is that a two-piecer? Oh yeah, yeah, this is what I'm talking about, the two-piece ones. This one might not be as heavily flamed, but since it's, you know, Two P oh, whoa, 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 whoa. 
<laughs> Excuse me? This seller maybe just didn't quite capture it because that looks almost dead. But then when you get it at that angle, it comes to life. That's an interesting one. Yeah, I think with that money, I would make an offer on this one and get the two-piece top, not have a crack on the front. But interestingly enough, both of these had Dunlop strap locks on them. A lot of these ended up getting played because they were just jazz guys switching over to solid body electric guitars. Kind of an interesting part of Gibson's past. All right, troglodytes, thank you for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.